For my study of this self-portrait painting by Rembrandt, I'm going to do a brief sketch of the nose area. I'm going to just focus on the nose for this study that I'm doing. For a study like this, it's really okay to just focus on a particular area. You don't have to paint an entire painting to um, really study something and just understand how the painting was created and how it was built. Now the sketch that you do before you actually start your painting, which is what we're doing right now here, doesn't need to be completely precise. Um, you just want to get the basic architecture of what you're going to be working on and what you're going to paint. You can adjust and um, get more precise with it later on as you develop the painting. Now that the sketch is done, we can actually get started with the painting and start applying paint um, to our canvas here. I decided to start with that very right side of the nose, which is a little bit darker. It's not um, close to being as bright and light as the highlight part of the nose. Now that first color I applied was much too yellow, so I am applying here just a, a more pinkish color. And I mix this color by mixing a lizard crimson cadmium green, white, and cadmium yellow together. I use my thumb here to rub in more of this pink light color and also help to get rid, rid more of that yellowish color that wasn't working out. And I also try to here paint um, over more of this um, pinkish mixture that I mixed up and um, just help to make that more of the dominant color in this area for the right side of the nose. I work my way leftward now, kind of getting into more of that lighter part of the nose. And for this color, I use white and cadmium yellow, and then I use purple to mute the color, because if I just had white and yellow, it would be far too yellow of a color. And then alizarin the crimson helps to bring in more of that um, um, pinkish color to, to the tone. Because I was realizing a lot of the colors weren't really working out the way I needed them to and how I was observing them in this Rembrandt painting, I decided to scrape it out, kind of rub it out with my fingers as well. Um, and I'm kind of starting afresh here. So I'm mixing up again this more pinkish color that I used um, white and um, cadmium yellow as well as cadmium green and alizarin crimson. And that kind of gets you a really nice um, sort of muted pinkish color. And that, this will work much better now um, than what I had earlier. Now, no matter what you paint, it's really to your benefit to start your painting with a strong sense of light and dark. So that is why I'm at this beginning um, stage of the painting here. I'm starting with um, three main values. That is a light value, a medium value, and a dark value. So that pink color is kind of my medium value because it's at the right edge of the nose. And now with this dark kind of purplish color that I'm now applying just this moment here is my dark value. And then I will be kind of moving on to my light value. But first I'm putting down this dark value and having those three values will really um, help me to create a sense of light right from the beginning of the painting. Now to mix up the color for this kind of purplish um, shadow color, I mixed ultramarine blue and cadmium orange together, as well as alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, and some white. I also worked on softening the edge between the right part of the nose here and then that purple shadowy, shadowy area. But in the process of softening the edge, I also um, took away some of that paint. So I'm painting over the area with more paint here on the right side of the nose, um, more of my kind of pinkish um, color here that again, I used um, alizarin crimson, cadmium green, white, and some cadmium yellow to get this. So now that I've painted my dark value color and my medium value color, I now um, turn my attention to painting my light value color. So I mix up a much lighter value color and I apply that now to the left side of the nose and I create a soft edge between the light color and then my medium value color. 
and I just use my finger kind of between the two colors to create that softer transition. But I feel like it should be a little bit lighter in value, so I actually use my palette knife and scrape away some of the paint that I just applied. Um, I do this often when I um, want to see if an area actually should be lighter than it is. It just helps me to gauge um, how the painting looks when it actually is a little bit lighter. I then use a lot more white to create a much lighter value color here that I apply. So now that we have our three main values in place, our light, medium, and dark value, we can move on to um, moving on to the rest of the painting because we have this um, sense of light happening, this intersection of light and dark values. So I move to the bottom portion of the nose here and I apply um, that darker shadow color that is there. You can see it in the Rembrandt painting where that he has that um, shadow color kind of at the base portion of the nose. So now I'm gonna get into some more richer pink colors that are part of this nose. Um, so I mix up some more muted kind of pink colors and I'm applying that to this more base section of the nose. You can now get a more close-up visual here of what's happening with this um, nose study painting. So I'm applying again this pinkish color as I was before to the more base portion of the nose. Now I need to mix up a much brighter, lighter pink color um, to apply more to the, the front um, part of the nose that um, it, it's much lighter in that area and the top portion of the nose. So I'm applying that color there. As I work here, I'm constantly paying attention to edges and adjusting edges, making softer edges in certain areas, um, creating soft transitions, just as I just did between the light part of the nose and then this more medium pink color. Now I'm making a softer transition between this um, more pinky color to the slightly darker color that's the right edge of the nose. Now I start to work a little bit more into the shadow area that's at the base of the nose and I mix up a much darker color um, so that it kind of um, fits the tone and value range that it needs to be. It's much more important to have the values working and the values on um, the kind of degree of darkness or lightness that they need to be than to have the color correct. Now I make that shadow area at the base of the nose even darker because I realize that it actually does need to be a little bit darker. Just as I said before, value is so important and it's um, good to pay more attention to that than to color. You can always adjust the color later on, but really um, try to have the value be right above everything else. Now we jumped ahead here in the painting and we went a little bit further here. We um, worked further with that base portion of the nose, um, kind of getting the, the dark shadow areas of the nostrils as well as that left side of the nose and then also getting that really bright highlight that's kind of in the middle section of the nose there. I'm working into that lower left side of the nose here and I mix up an orangey pinkish kind of color to work on that 
um, lower left outer part of the nostril there. And I'm really searching for the form in that area. As always, after applying a color, I really work on the edges and kind of take care of those edges and very often use my fingers to do that. Soften edges, or if they need to be sharp edges, I'll use my palette knife. Now I darken the upper left side of the nose just a little bit. Um, that area is, um, I want to make sure that it stands out and that it is darker next to that very light highlight area that's at the top part of the nose. Now the, um, just the shape of the nostrils isn't quite right and it's not really working, so I'm going to adjust that here. So I'm taking some of the same um, really dark color that I used earlier to paint the nostrils and I'm adjusting the shape of it. Um, so I can do that by painting over the area and also using my palette knife to scrape away some paint and just reinforce that area. And as I work, I also deal with the edges and soften edges that need to be softer and also um, sharpen edges that need to be harder and sharper. I now turn my attention to the area of the face that's right next to the nose, um, next to the left part of the nose. And I mix up kind of a more, little more orangey color, uh, not as pink-like. And I apply that to um, this area kind of next to the nostrils. It's important to really also consider the surrounding areas of what you're painting, what the focal point of your painting is. And in this study, the focal point, of course, is the nose. But I also need to pay attention to the surrounding areas of the nose because doing that will help me to figure out what colors and what values um, the different parts of the nose should be because the nose works in concert with what's um, surrounding it. For a brief little bit, I turn my attention to the lower left part of the nose that's darker in value. And I wanna capture some of that more um, really warm shadow area that's on the nose, but I will get back to that later be um, before I Continue on that, I want to um, move here towards just this um, left upper portion um, that's to the, to the left of the nose here. Now as I deal with this area that's kind of to the left of the nose, um, this lighter, more yellowish um, portion, all these different kind of colors, I'm paying attention to all the color spots in this area, but at the same time, I'm retaining that um, big picture of the value in that area. They're all very similar in value, but I'm um, kind of being specific about the color spots here, but also kind of keeping that much lighter in value than other parts of the painting. Now I'm gonna shift my focus to the area that's below the nose, um, below the bottom part of the nose. And as you can see in the Rembrandt painting, there's a, a strong shadow area. It's very similar in value to the shadow area that's, the, that's at the bottom part of the nose, but it's a little bit darker. So I mix up a rather dark color using phthalo green, alizarin crimson, and um, I mix in a, just a little bit of white and a small amount of yellow. Um, but the color that I applied was a little bit too dark, so I actually scraped it away using a palette knife. And I'm reworking the color and making it just a little bit lighter in value. And I kind of have it slightly purplish and, um, as I just mentioned, made it a little bit lighter than what I had before. As that shadow area, of course, doesn't extend the whole area, below the nose, I use my palette knife to scrape away um, the area that um, should be dark, that doesn't need to be dark, and so then I'm going to work in that area, making that area lighter in value.
Now I return my attention to this um, area that's below the base of the nose and I actually use a rag to wipe away more thoroughly just the paint that is there so that I can apply just some clean paint. I don't want this um, color to get mixed up with that really dark color because it's just going to darken my color way too much and not going to serve well um, in the painting. So I mix up a color that's just a little bit darker than the color that I used earlier for the more yellow area of the painting that's to the left of the nose. Now as I apply the color I'm at the same time really paying attention to the edges because that's what um, I continually constantly do as I'm painting, really paying attention to what's going on um, to color, two colors that are next to one another, are they a soft edge, a hard edge? And I use my fingers, use my palette knife to um, kind of reinforce what's going on between those two colors. Now it's becoming clear to me that the base of the nose is actually not dark enough and it needs to be darkened. So I mix up again a um, rather dark color and I apply it to that um, base portion of the nose. And now after darkening that, I do need to darken the nostril area of the nose as well, that shadow area that's there to the left. So I, um, again, mix up a, a quite a dark color that's even darker than what I just used and use it for that area. Now before I move on further applying more paint, I'm paying attention to the edges and kind of adjusting them as needed. Now I finally return to the shadow area that's um, by the nostril and I kind of work on the shape of it and also darken it. It's um, very much needed more attention, so I'm finally getting back to that here. It's good and it's, it's very normal to move around the painting, to kind of work on multiple areas, and that actually really helps to bring about more cohesiveness, more wholeness in your painting when you're really paying attention to the painting as a whole. So that's why some areas like the shadow area by this nostril was kind of left um, kind of unfinished and it still needs more attention but you kind of move around the painting as you go. And per usual I'm paying attention to the edges here and really kind of um, digging into what areas need to be soft, what areas need to be harder and kind of um, reworking those. I then apply that very important light value highlight that's right at the tip of the nose, kind of the front section, lower part of the nose. And as in the other parts of this painting, I want to work with the surrounding areas, the areas that are surrounding the nose. So I now turn my attention to the right part, um, area that's to the right of the nose here. It is a slightly darker value color than um, is on the left side of the face. And I soften the edge here because the edges are quite soft between the shadow part and then that slightly lighter area. Next, I mix up really nice kind of bluish um, shadow, bluish gray, I should say. Bluish gray shadow color that's forming the eye, that kind of that shadow area that's below the eye. I then use my palette knife to scrape away paint where needed because I don't need as much paint as I apply to my canvas and that's often the case. I very often use my palette knife to kind of scrape away paint and to draw with. But I also realized that that area needs to be a little bit lighter in value so I actually lightened um, the color by mixing in a little bit of white into the paint and applying that um, to that same area. 
Now, if you notice the area that's above the nose, um, kind of as it goes into the forehead, it gets a little bit darker there because we're getting more of that cast shadow from the hat. So I mix up a darker color. I use that same color I used earlier for the shadow part of the eye and just make it darker by mixing in darker colors to that color of my palette. And as usual, I employ my palette knife here to work with the edges and make the edges softer where they need to be softer and also use my fingers. So now I'm really moving beyond the nose here and I'm actually going to just start out painting the eye, the, the left eye here. So you can kind of see just the beginning formations of how to go about kind of starting the eye, which is kind of obviously right next to the nose, right above the nose, um, and it kind of is a natural um, transition kind of as we move up here and getting into the eye and we kind of find the big color spots that are in that area, but we focus on the value as we've done throughout this painting. So I focus here right now, I'm kind of painting this darker kind of brownish color that's a shadow area in that eye. Now after kind of laying in the initial value areas, kind of I have a darker value area, lighter value area, now I can get more specific and I have a darker color here that I'm going to kind of find the outline of the actual eye here. I'm um, just placing um, just the basic architecture of the shape of the eye area. Now, what looks like me waving my brush around here is actually me measuring. I'm using my brush here to kind of measure where the, um, just the, the areas of this eye are placed. And I have my book in front of me where I'm actually viewing the painting because I'm painting this from an actual book copy that I have of this painting. So I'm using my brush here to kind of um, see the placement of the eye and different aspects of the eye. It's really important to actually be precise with measurings, especially in portraits, um, and kind of really know where things are placed. And you can use a straight stick, you can use a brush, um, just any tool that's handy that's close by to you and just see where things line up with other um, parts of the painting and make sure that's, that it's in the correct position. Now I've darkened this shadow um, area that's kind of in the eye portion of this painting. Um, that I, I, dark, I made a dark shadow area there before but I didn't quite make it dark enough so I just darkened it and I'm really searching for the shapes shadow shapes and really trying to view everything as a shape and breaking it down in that way. I now work on painting the area of the eye that's above the eyelid. It's of course lighter than the dark shadow area I was painting before, but it's still not very light in value. And then of course I also deal with the edges as I go along and as I paint. Then I also go ahead and I actually paint the eyelid part of this eye. And as you can see, I'm, I'm not trying to be detailed here at all. I'm really just seeing this in terms of the color spots, just painting the color spots as they are and putting that down. Um, I'm not worrying about um, necessarily this precise shape of that um, and getting that to be correct. I'm first putting down the color and I can get more specific a little bit later. Now I'm starting to get more specific or a little more specific. So I just um, created that, that dark line that you see that kind of separates that eyelid from the upper part of the eye. It's, um, it's, it's more of a shadow area than a line. So uh, be careful not to make that too dark. 
um, just kind of really ob observe what value it is. And I also use this dark value that I have, this dark value paint, to start actually painting the eye. And again, as throughout the process of this painting, I'm really putting value at the forefront, just thinking of value above all else. So I um, create this dark, kind of really compare what value this eye um, color is compared to the other parts of the painting. Now, as I go along, I kind of take a view of my painting as a whole, and I pay attention to edges and other areas, and kind of constantly working with that, kind of working with the painting, making the edges be what they need to be, and return to the eye area, paint um, the area dark that needs to be dark, and kind of move forward. Now, throughout the process of this um, study, I place a color spot down, but um, of course, that's not quite the right size because um, I'm really just putting down the color spot and then I adjust it later on. Like right here, I use my palette knife to scrape away some of that paint um, and really look at the shape of that and what size it is um, and just the geometry of that color spot. So I kind of am continually drawing with my palette knife. So that concludes our tutorial of how to paint a nose and this close study of this Rembrandt self-portrait painting. I have lots more tutorials and videos for you to go through and learn from. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and visit my website at artstudiolife.com. Thank you for watching.